Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another Books Weekly, my Sunday video in which I discuss books that I've either finished from a previous week or read last week or started last week. And the first book is the book that I've finished from the previous week and that is Margaret Combs' memoir Hazard. Margaret Combe is a journalist, an American journalist. Uh, she was born in the 1950s, early 1950s, and her family lived in a southern Baptist town. They are from Kentucky. Um, and in 1956, Margaret's younger brother, Roddy, was born, and he, as turned out later, uh, was autistic. So the memoir... Um, was kindly sent to me through NetGalley, but the memoir um, is is promoted as being um, yeah a tale about how autism was looked at in the 1950s and 60s and 70s and how the family coped with it. And that's partly true, but for the most part it's a memoir memoir about Margaret Combs and her struggle to free herself from the family, to make it in the big city. She studied in Pennsylvania. So I was a bit put off by the fact that I expected something else. I expected something much more centering around the autism of the younger brother and how um, people with autism at that time was looked at as retarded and maybe even evil. And that um, influenced my pleasure of the book. But still, it's a, a, a good memoir if you're interested in um, a tale of a woman growing up in the 1950s and 60s and 70s in a southern town and um, the, the lifestyle she experienced and the way she tries to free herself and make it on her own, then it's certainly worth a try. Oh, by the way, it comes out on um, March 21st, so you, if you want to read it, you will have to wait a while. The second book was a reread, and I reread Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic, which came out in 2015. I don't think I'd need to introduce Elizabeth Gilbert, Eat, Pray, Love. She's well known, so I I'll, I'll won't spend any time on talking about the author. Big Magic is her latest book as I said, came out in 2015, in which she explores and gives advice how to lead a creative life. Um, it's a self-help book, if you want to say, yeah, I mean, she, she says herself it's a self-help book. And I read reread this book before a talk I had to give about uh, creativity. And a disclaimer up front, part of the book deals with uh, Gilbert's idea that creativity and the ideas that spurn cre creativity are sentient beings floating around in the universe and looking for a human collaborator. I'm not into that at all. Hell, I don't even really enjoy magical realism in novels. Um, but you can read the book even if you think those ideas are silly. Because for the most part, it gives quite sound and down-to-earth advice about um, how to explore your creativity and the fears you may encounter and how to deal with those fears. So for people who want to explore creativity and are afraid to, uh, I think it's still worthwhile reading, even if you don't. Um, agree with the idea of ideas being sentient beings floating around in the universe. Um, oh, and by the way, if you are interested, I also participated in Elizabeth Gilbert's magic lessons, which are not really lessons about magic, uh, but lessons for people who have some hurdles to overcome with their creativity. It's a podcast. Um, and uh, if you're interested, I will leave a link uh, down below. It, it was quite fun to do it, and uh, she actually gave some really sound and some really um, pragmatic advice, so it, it helped me. Um, but if you are... Well, I, if, if you look at the TED Talks, Gilbert's TED Talks, if you hate those, don't read the book. If you think, well, that might be interested, interesting, then you would 
probably enjoy the book. Then on to the next book, which was Ada Palmer, To Like the Lightning, the first in a series, the Terra Ignota series, and the first book came out last year. Um, Ada Palmer is a historian, a young American writer, historian by trade. She uh, earlier published a book about Lucretius in the Renaissance, um, and the Terra Ignata series is her first novel series. It's science fiction. And if you follow me on uh, Goodreads or other social media, you will probably remember that I bought the book, I think around Christmas, and DNF'd it after 50 pages, because at that time I was looking for an easy read, and To Like the Lightning is not an easy read. It follows our main character, Mycroft Kenner. It's told in the first person. Mycroft Kenner lives in the 25th century. He is a convicted murderer. We only learn later on what he did, but it's clear that he is a convicted murderer. And in the 25th century, convicts are not sent to prison, but they are stripped of the right to own property and they are sentenced to service, lifelong service, um, for people who want to use their services and for the services they get food and some payment. Um, the, the novel is quite um, complex and I think that because looking for an easy read in December that put me off. We are in the 25th century where we have no nation states anymore but we have hives um, uh, and those hives are based on particular certain ideas which bind the people together. Um, and, and people in those hives, they live not in families, but uh, in bashes, bash units, which are um, uh, units in which you voluntarily live with, um, could be a spouse, but could be somebody else. It, it's more like uh, what in German we call a Wohngemeinschaft, so living together without necessarily being a family. The novel um, is, I, I thought, the, the second read, it, it was fantastic, uh, going in with different expectations. It's quite slow in the beginning. You learn about the different hives. You learn about Mycroft Kenner. There's also a boy which seems to have very special abilities. But the first book much doesn't deal a lot with the boy and deals much more with political intrigue between the hives when a, a certain list gets stolen and who stole the list and why. And we learn about Mycroft Kenner's involvement in the different hives. So if you're looking for a hardcore sci-fi novel with fantastic world building and a complex plot, this is certainly a book for you, but go in it, certainly the first hundred pages, not feeling meh because you might not understand everything. I reread the book right after I finished it in order to, you know, understand more about the depth of the world building, which relies heavily on philosophy of the Enlightenment. There's a lot of Voltaire in there. So you need to want to read a book that is a combination of sci-fi, uh, politics and philosophy. But I thought it, it was fantastic and the second in the series will com come out next week, Seven Surrenders, and I will certainly read that one as well. And the last book is the book that I've started this weekend and that's a biography by Keggy Carew called Deadland. The book was published in the UK last year, won the Costa Award for Biography, and will be published in the US um, next week, 7th of March, I think. Um, Kegi Carew was, is, um, uh, she lives in Salisbury. She did work in, as, a, as an artist in mixed media art, whatever that might be. Um, and her father, uh, the book is about her father, obviously. Tom Carey, uh, Carey he, he uh, suffered from Alzheimer's when Keggy started to write the book, and she explores his past, 
which was quite spectacular because he was a secret agent in the Second World War, dropped behind enemy lines. So I, that's basically all I know going into the book. I, I thought that sounded really, really very interesting, but I have only read the first 10 pages or so, so I can't talk more about it than that. But I'm looking forward to uh, reading more. So this was it for this week's Books Weekly, all about stuff too much to bear. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.